photographers are appearing uh, in front of the official party, and it seems as if they are going to go directly to the uh, exhibit, which uh, Professor, no, they have turned and they're going into the building and uh, Dr. Spear uh, will, while Mr. Khrushchev is out of view of our television cameras, uh, explain to you uh, exactly what uh, uh, Dr. Katrin will explain later to uh, Chairman Khrushchev. Here is Dr. Spear. All right, uh, we thought we would go through this display before the mob of reporters got here so the uh, TV audience would have a chance at seeing just what Mr. Khrushchev will see. His first stop out here, of course, will be this pen of today's meat-type hog. Uh, the swine industry is striving to reduce the amount of fat uh, in pork, and this is the type of a pig uh, which will yield a uh, high uh, dressing uh, carcass, giving us a, a high percentage of good lean cuts uh, in uh, pork. Now, we will move over to the other table, and he will see a uh, display on the modern life cycle swine feeding program, uh, again, that has been developed here at Iowa State College. In this uh, section, uh, we have displayed here a chart showing the complete life cycle of the pig, the various stages of gestation, lactation, uh, growing, and finishing. In this display, we have pictured the amount of feed involved in producing a 200-pound market pig from 10 pounds of body weight, in other words, two weeks after farrowing until market weight. During the first few days of the baby pig's uh, life after weaning, uh, we will feed this pig three pounds of a 20% pig starter. We will then change the ration to a 25% or 25 pounds of an 18% pig starter. The ration is again changed at approximately 25 pounds of body weight and 50 pounds of a 16% pig, pig grower is fed. <coughs> when the pig weighs in the neighborhood of 50 pounds, the ration is again changed to a 14% pig grower and a total of 204 pounds fed. At a body weight of 125 pounds, the ration is again changed to a 12% finisher ration, making a total of 532 pounds of feed that is fed to today's meat type pig, or a feed efficiency, and again, Mr. Khrushchev will be very interested in this, a feed efficiency of 2.8 pounds of feed building than we did on our original uh, run-through of what was to happen here on our television pickup. There is an animated discussion now going on between uh, Professor Katrin and Chairman Khrushchev. And in just a moment, uh, uh, Professor Katrin will uh, pick up another microphone, and we hope that you will be able to hear the discussion, the questions and the answers and the interpretations uh, as Professor Katrin explains this exhibit to Chairman Khrushchev. That is uh, only a small alcove, as it were. Uh, Mr. Khrushchev is uh, to be in that uh, location for only a moment or so, and then he will uh, return to the area which uh, is a little bit uh, to the left, uh, out of range in your picture where Dr. Spear explained the exhibit to you just a moment ago. Also, uh, the discussion will be on a public address uh, system here, and uh, the press will be able to hear Professor Katrin's uh, explanations to Mr. Khrushchev. 
Something else seems to have captured his attention for a moment because he's remaining. Pig, disease controlled laboratory, uh, Jack. Uh, I believe the uh, Professor Catron is picking up our other microphone. No, not yet, but uh, in a moment, we hope that you'll be able to hear this uh, conversation between the manager of the Swine Nutrition Farm and Chairman Khrushchev. Yes, apparently Dr. Caitlin is having some trouble uh, finding Here we go. Mary had now, uh, Chairman Khrushchev, I'd like to show you some of the basic sciences involved in our swine nutrition research today. Chemistry. Enzymology, engineering, statistics, endocrinology, bacteriology, anatomy, and physiology. These are all the different disciplines which we are using today in our research techniques. Now, if I might, I would like to show you again here uh, our, what we call a life cycle feeding program. If you would come down here, please. We try to divide the life cycle of swine into different sections. <laughs> different periods so that we can study the nutritional requirements during these different periods. and build the rations according to the nutritional needs during the different periods. And if I might, I'd like for, this, for you to see here, we start out here with the pre-starter for the baby pig. It takes three pounds of this pre-starter. Then we go to a starter, tw starter ration. And then a grower ration. That is a, a day's ration? No, that's the amount to make a 200 pound market hog from farrowing. Coming from farrowing to market, it takes three pounds of a pre starter. Born when they're. These, no, these are the complete feeds. I will show that the individual bags are the, the components of, of the diet. No, there are complete rations within themselves, sir. This, uh, this is. Yeah, but that's right, but components within the, the entire lifespan. That's right, that's right. Starting with the pre-starter. Then the starter ration, then the grower ration, and then we have another grower, and then a finisher ration. And all total, it takes 532 pounds of feed to make a 200-pound market hog from birth to two, 200 pounds. These are scientifically balanced rations, the best we know how to build them. Very good. Then I would like to show you, if I can get my cord loose here, gentlemen, uh, please. All right, this is a scientifically balanced baby pig 20% starter ration. These are the different ingredients, like corn, soybean oil meal, whey, skim milk, condensed feed solubles, distiller solubles, fat, calcium carbonate, and then we down here have salt, trace mineral mixtures like iron, copper, co cobalt, manganese, and zinc. We are adding enzymes to these baby pig rations to help them digest their feed better. Antioxidant and a flavor to make them eat it better. Then the different vitamins. Vitamin A, vitamin D, riboflavin, panathenic acid, niacin, B12, and antibiotics. 
This helps to protect the health of the pain. Thank you very much, Damon. And now, Chairman Khrushchev, on behalf of the faculty in agriculture at Iowa State College, we'd like to give you a token of remembrance to you on your visit here. And this is a meat-type hog, which we hope you will carry back and put on your desk to remember Iowa State University. We're very happy you were here today. У нас обычно, когда кто-либо кому подкладывает свинью, очень недовольны этим самым. In our country, uh, there's a proverb, when one some does uh, something unpleasant to another person, they say, he gave him a pig. No, 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 в данном случае, я выражаю вам исключительную признательность за такое подкладывание. I express my deepest appreciation for this fine gift you have given me. You will notice that this says in the mutual entrance interests of swans. Swans. Взаимных интересах, значит, не науки, а свинауки. Вот так вот. Да. Видите, о свине очень много сочинено о ее нечистоплотности. Но это неправильно. Свинья, она, знаете, человек больше проявляет свинство, чем сама свинья. Много раз. Часто так бывает. Часто бывает, когда человек больше проявляет свинство, чем свинья. Some people, there are great many stories about the swine being an unclean animal. But in fact, there are many cases when a swine is a more noble animal than even a human being can be. I agree with that. I've often said. I've often said the more I see of some people, the better I like pigs. Я часто говорю, что чем больше я вижу некоторых людей, тем больше мне нравится свиньи. Я с вами согласен. I agree with you. Спасибо. Я очень рад с вами познакомиться и бегло ознакомиться с вашим учебным заведением. Я немножко знаком э, по рассказам э, наших специалистов, которые у вас бывали, и мы очень высокого мнения о постановке у вас дела преподавания и общего дела. Желаю вам успеха, давайте обмениваться опытами, это будет полезно для вашей страны и для нас. Uh, thank you. I'm very glad uh, to have had this chance to meet you and to have paid uh, this short visit uh, to your experimental station. Uh, people, uh, we know something, and I have known something, about this experimental station from the stories of the people, of our people who returned back home uh, from Iowa. Uh, they uh, praised it very greatly, saying it is an excellent uh, uh, institution. Uh, I think so, too. And uh, let us therefore exchange uh, experience as much as we can. This would be to the good of us both. Прошу передать вашим студентам мои добрые пожелания, с тем, чтобы они лучше учились и готовились хорошо служить своему народу, своей родине. Please convey my best regards, uh, my best wishes uh, to your students, so that they would uh, study. Mrs. Khrushchev has been discovered. Mrs. Khrushchev has been discovered in the crowd. She has been making her way all along the fence, greeting all of the spectators who have been standing around. They are barricaded from the actual arena of operations here. But Madame Khrushchev has been extremely gracious and has been shaking hands with almost everyone in the crowd. In just a moment, I believe that Professor Leslie E. Johnson. Thank you very Chairman much. We are very happy you were here. The Husbandry Department will uh, present Madame Khrushcheva with uh, a bouquet of flowers. Now the Chairman is holding aloft the pig. Замечательная свинья, американская, но она имеет все свойства и советской свиньи. И американская свинья и советская, я убежден, что они могут хорошо вместе э, э, сосуществовать. Так почему же люди Советского Союза и Америки не могут сосуществовать в таком случае? This is a fine American uh, pig. It has, however, all the characteristics of a Soviet pig, too. Uh, these uh, pigs, American pigs and Soviet pigs, uh, can coexist. Why, then, cannot our nations coexist just as well? 
Okay, we go over here this way. Thank you very much, Dean. Thank you very much. Goodbye. Nice to have had you here. It seems as if now uh, Chairman Khrushchev is about to uh, depart, get back in the official car. Oh. Yes, he's found uh, an aisle through which he can uh, proceed to his own limousine, and uh, shortly we believe that the official party uh, will leave the Swine Nutrition Farm of Iowa State University, and as the sun sets on the farm, the sun also sets on uh, the chairman's visit to Iowa, because from here in Ames, he will return quickly to Des Moines and board the air transport service jet plane that will fly him directly from here to Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, the next stop on his uh, official visit to the United States. Madame Kristova has left the crowd and is returning to the automobile. Uh, yes, there we have her in the picture. And she has had herself quite a time while uh, the chairman was inspecting the swine. Madame Kristova has met literally hundreds of Iowans. Professor Spear, do you know who that is? Jack, to uh, that is uh, Mrs. Hilton, uh, Mrs. Uh, the, the wife, wife of, of the, the president, president of, of Iowa State. State. Yes, of Iowa State University, Mrs. James Hilton. Well, these are the departures, and uh, our television cameras will remain on the official party until the caravan is out of sight. There is a slight delay. Jack, we There's might just comment on Mr. Kuchev's statement there about the pig and coexistence. Uh, the particular breeding of the pig that was given, given to him is called the English large white. And as we understand it from visitors in Russia, uh, this is the type of breeding that predominates in Russia. So this uh, type of uh, nutrition that you've been working on here is exactly uh, his cup of tea, is that right? That's right. It's exactly what he needs to uh, take back to Russia with him to uh, uh, introduce your, your uh, nutritional practices into the Soviet agriculture to in order to uh, uh, compete with Iowa as he seems to be uh, determined to do in the production of uh, pork. Now we're in motion. The caravan is on its way out of the Swine Nutritional Farm. And uh, all of the Department of State cars following behind the official car containing Chairman and Madame uh, Khrushcheva. We have quite a crowd which has assembled out here since the arrival of the official party. They must have followed it out here because until uh, only a few moments before the first of the cars arrived, uh, no one was around except security guards and the um, uh, staff of the nutritional farm. And now we hear the uh, comments of the swine residents uh, in their pens. I don't know, Professor Spear, is it near feeding time, perhaps? <laughs> well, Jack, uh, these pigs are have a free choice feeding system. As method that's the way we do uh, things in the free feeding, world feeding themselves any time that they choose to do so well there's the difference and uh, we can see the uh, the uh, red flashing lights of the police cars uh, as they are Signs in Russian greeted Premier Khrushchev as his motor caravan drove through Iowa towns today on his way to several farms in the Coon Rapids area. He told Roswell Garst, his host for the tour, that he felt this was going to be a jovial day and he took a keen interest in whatever, whatever he saw, whether it was sorghum, hybrid corn, or healthy Iowa livestock. 
Corn chopping caught his eye, and he had several questions to ask wherever he went about the crop and the machinery used for harvesting. It seemed to observers that the weariness he showed at a dinner last night had been replaced by an eagerness more characteristic of Khrushchev. The, press, the press of cameramen irritated Garst more than once. Then through an interpreter, Khrushchev and Garst discussed the relative merits of American and Russian corn. But the conversation took a very stra strange twist, at least for an atheist such as Khrushchev. When uh, Mr. Garst first came to our country, we bought hybrid corn from him. In the last year, Mr. Garst came to our country and saw our hybrid cucumber. Uh, this year, Mr. Uh, Garst visited our country again, again and saw the hybrid corn we now have. Is it any worse, worse than yours? No, I think, <laughs> I don't like to say worse, I think, uh, it's very good. Я бы не стал хуже, я бы сказал, что это очень хорошая кукуруза. Поэтому если бы я сейчас сказал, что я хочу купить у вас гибридную кукурузу, а Гарс умный хозяин, он сказал, ну Хрущев, наверное, поглупел, хочет купить у вас то, что себя имеет. И now if I were to say that I want to buy some more hybrid corn now, uh, Gars would probably think I've grown stupid. <laughs> Right. Well, well, they have wonderful cattle. Tell Mr. Khrushchev uh, that uh, we have a higher rainfall in this area than uh, is true in most of the Soviet Union, and uh, the it's thickness of our planting is probably somewhat based upon higher rainfall oh, expectations. So is it a bit more acceptable to them? Very accepted. Этим объясняется то, что они более... Я вам скажу, что вы умные люди, это да, верно. Но что Господь, Бог вам тоже помог, в чем вы не виноваты, это тоже признаете. Uh, I must say that you are a very wise and intelligent people in this part of the country, but we must also admit that God has helped you quite a bit. That's right, right. he's on our side. Он на нашей стороне. Right. Земля хорошая? Нет, well. Вы что, думаете, думаете, только вам Бог помогает, а нам не помогает? You mustn't think God is helping only you. <laughs> нам, нам Он больше помогает. It's hel he's helping us too. Yeah. Мы быстрее растем, чем вы. Because we are developing. Значит, Бог на нашей yeah. стороне. Well, you tell him, we have a saying in the United States, he likes yeah. to both yeah. saying. Yeah. The Lord helps those who help themselves. Uh, and Mr. Khrushchev added that God, therefore, is on our side. The thing God says, so у нас есть такая поговорка, что Бог на стороне тех, кто помогает самим себе. Бог всегда поддерживает умных. He always supports the intelligence. Yeah. And that was today's discussion of God. Now back to John Daly in New York. Thank you. Governor, uh, here we are in Iowa, where Senior Khrushchev is getting you apparently the Cook's tour. Uh, what is well, your personal opinion about this? Got to get the farmer's tour in any event. Yes. Well, this, of course, one of the great sites of the world for uh, anyone who's interested in corn culture. The Garst Farms and their management and the extent to which they have increased uh, yields by the use of uh, fertilizers and insecticides and herbicides um, is uh, phenomenal. and. Uh, aggravates our farm problem and also ensures our, our productivity. I think the, uh, if uh, Mr. Khrushchev had any one thing that he wanted to see most in this country, I, my guess would be that it would be uh, corn farming and the gosh farms in Iowa. He does admit that he is not caught up to our productivity of, and methods of farming. I think they know a good deal about the methods. They haven't applied them mm -hmm. yet, but they're in the process of doing it, I have no doubt. What, what value do you think this law is going to have, Governor, in the end result? I, mean, I, I can't be limited on what its value is to, uh, to the uh, resolution of our problem of peace with the Soviet Union, but I think uh, if we think of it in terms of the increased uh, well-being of um, mankind, that uh, the insurance of an adequate diet for the world, whether they're Russians or whether they're Indians, is, uh, is very important. And of course, the increased uh, production of corn means increased production of livestock. 
and that means more meat in the human diet, and this is what one of the things uh, where the Russians have been very deficient in which they are now trying to correct. So how about just an increase in understanding between uh, Mr. Khrushchev and the United States? Well, I said to Mr. Khrushchev when I was in Moscow last summer, I thought the best place to hold a summit meeting would be in an Illinois cornfield. <laughs> that is, uh, he ended up in an Iowa cornfield. <laughs> he told us yesterday, Governor, he thought it might be a good idea that once a year the uh, uh, but he or his successor and the president of this country have a meeting once a year. What do you think of that idea? I made a <coughs> speech several years ago in a recent presidential campaign, which I said I thought we ought to have more and less fun of meetings at all levels. So I'm in favor of, uh, of talking at every opportunity we can get. I didn't suppose there were any flies out here. <laughs> this is a great surprise to me. We didn't bring them. <laughs> well, have to excuse me. Now, I, I'm, I'm going to go and see some more of this farm because I'm not only going to come out here to pay my respects to our distinguished visitor, but also to see what I can do to improve the yield of corn on my farm and I. Governor, just one last question. Is there anything special that you want to tell Mr. Khrushchev when you see him up at the, at the guy's farm? I'd like to talk with him about some things um, uh, having to do with what he has learned about us and uh, what he thinks we've learned about the Russians. And also, I'd like to talk a little about the uh, implementation of his proposal for universal disarmament. Is that as harebrained in use to you as it is to some, sir? No, it isn't. No, on the contrary, I think we should treat it with the utmost sobriety and, and examine it most carefully. I've always been one of those who felt that uh, that uh, the, um, the arms race was the most uh, hazardous uh, affliction that we, which we suffered and that we have to do something to arrest it. And I think we're on the eve of doing something about nuclear testing and maybe we can go beyond that. Thank you, Governor. I'd like to hope so. Thank you very Thank much, you Give us a little bit of an idea of what you showed him, sir. We got There's only a trench silo with the uh, silage being put up, cut in the field, put in the trench silo. We showed him a silage operation in operation. We showed him the cattle and our methods of feeding and the lack of, uh, of uh, housing that we have for our cattle uh, of beef kind. Now, we know dairy cattle must be better housed, but beef cattle do not need housing. Now, I'm going to show him next by just driving by some ear corn dryers, and the next stop we'll make will be over at Thomas's farm. Could he give us some idea of what he, what he thinks of what you showed him so far, sir? Yeah. Could the chairman tell us briefly what he thinks of what uh, Mr. Garth has shown him so far? Я с господином Гарфтом давно уже знаком и знаю его как хорошего фермера, который умеет хорошо вести свое дело. I have known Mr. Garth a long time and I know him to be a very good farmer who knows his business. Но у хорошего хозяина другой раз бывает не 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 все так сказать на высоте. But of course, every uh, farmer, even a very good one, uh, might have some uh, drawbacks. Например, я вот скажу свои замечания, которые я говорил господину Гарсу, но он слишком зазнался, но с высота берет и не хочет прислушаться. Он все время хочет учить нас, а сам не хочет наши критические замечания слушать. For instance, uh, I would uh, like to say a few words about the uh, critical remarks I made in regard to the yeah. corn there right. to Mr. Garth. Otherwise, he will uh, have his nose too high up in the air <laughs> and won't listen to any of our criticism. I think uh, you plant uh, your corn for silage too close together. Uh, too many stalks in each nest. И поэтому вы получаете меньше кормовых единиц, если вы имели бы меньше стеблей в гнезде. And for that reason you get uh, fewer uh, food units than you would have otherwise если if the planting had been rarer. У вас имеется 5-6 стеблей в гнезде, а если вы имели только 2 стебля, то вы имели больше бы початков, если вы имели бы больше кормовых единиц. You have about five or six stalks per, uh, per nest. Yeah. Uh, if you had uh, 
Sure, the three of them sure. would have been much better. Это вы можете получить химиками, они сделают химический анализ и подтвердят это. That uh, you would have more carbs then. Uh, I, I believe if you have the uh, scientists check on that, they would confirm that. Это вот мы русские знаете, а вот вы американцы еще этого не знаете. Okay. We Russians have that. Did you buy anything from you, Mr. Gosh? Is there anything you want to buy, Mr. Sherman? Ничего не заметили, чтобы вы хотели купить. He's going to sell it to us. Он продавать хочет нам. Господин Гарс, когда был, когда первый раз мы приехали, мы у него купили кукурузу гибридную. When Mr. Gars first came to our country, we bought hybrid corn from him. В этом году господин Гарс был у нас и видел нашу гибридную кукурузу. Наша хуже вашей? This year, Mr. Gars visited our country again and saw the hybrid. And we now have. Is it any worse than yours? No, I think <laughs> I don't like to say worse. I think uh, it's very good. Я бы не стал хуже, я бы сказал, что это очень хорошая кукуруза. Поэтому если бы я сейчас сказал, что я хочу купить у вас гибридную кукурузу, а Гарс умный хозяин, он сказал, ну Хрущев, наверное, поглупел, хочет купить у нас то, что себя имеет. And now if I were to say that I want to buy some more hybrid corn now, uh, Doss would probably think I've grown stupid. Очень хороший у вас скот, замечательный. You have wonderful cattle. Tell Mr. Khrushchev uh, that uh, we have a higher rainfall in this area than uh, is true in most of the Soviet Union, and uh, the it thickness of our planting is probably somewhat based upon higher что здесь обычно больше осадков, чем в советском среднем, и поэтому, может быть, этим объясняется то, что они более... Я вам скажу, что вы умные люди, это да, верно. Но что Господь Бог вам тоже помог, в чем вы не виноваты, это тоже признаете. Uh, I must say that you are a very wise and intelligent people in this part of the country, but we must also admit that God has helped you quite a bit. That's right, he's on our side. <laughs> 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 <laughs>